granite rockware for moon cusser art. I'm going to be pouring resin in a tray today. So I'm using the countertop epoxy. And I like this one when I'm using it in applications where um, there's possibility that there could be hot cups placed on it or um, in a food sensitive area. It gets a really nice hard finish and um, I've used a few others and I find that this one works the best. I'm gonna be a little dangerous but I wanted to show you, I'm using a clear cup because I want you to see just how crystal clear this resin is. I um, ordered this from Countertop Epoxy and uh, got it, went on their website and ordered it right through them and it took about five days for me to get my epoxy. So that was pretty fast. Now countertop epoxy recommends that you mix for three minutes and then transfer to another container to get a really good mix. Now it's going to have some bubbles in it. When you watch any of the videos from Countertop Epoxy, they do a lot of lives and stuff like that. When they do theirs, um, they use some type of uh, equipment because they do a lot of large surface areas. So they're going to use something to get those air bubbles out. I don't have that. I'm not, this is only a 16 by 16 inch wooden tray, painted white, and uh, I believe I got it from Walmart. Um, and they, they're really actually pretty, uh, pretty decent. Um, I was surprised at the quality of it. So um, it's pretty st sturdy and uh, I think it'll hold up really well. I did another resin tray um, and I liked how that one turned out. I've seen other people do resin trays as well and uh, it's summertime so people are having picnics and using their trays, and we're going to get one of these ready to go. So it's mixing up really nice, and it's just, it's going to go crystal clear on me, and that's about it for my time. Let me get another cup. And I'm going to get that transferred over. So let me scrape my stick. Now what this does when you transfer it into another cup is it helps you avoid having any pockets that are not well mixed. So if you're just starting out and learning how to work with resin, I would recommend that you do it. It seems, you know, like, oh, it's just an, another extra step. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of times I do not do this process, but, you know, just because I don't do it and the manufacturer recommends it, there's a reason why they recommend it. They want to make sure that you have success 
just as much as I do. So we're gonna play by the rules today. We're gonna get that all scraped and into that cup. Well, and I just dribbled out a little bit of clear resin onto the tray, but that's okay. We're gonna be pouring right there, so it doesn't matter. All right, so let's get it stirred in this cup. And then we can start tinting our colors. Oh, that looks so nice. Can you guys see how clear? Look at that clarity. It doesn't get better than that. And the other thing that's nice about countertop epoxy resin is the shine. It really cures with a hard, bright shine. And it's lovely. So if you haven't tried it, give them a shout. Order up some of their epoxy. They sell pigments too. Um, and they have all different ways of interesting you in buying their products. So, all right. Now yeah, let's get mixing some colors. So I'm not gonna do, uh, I'm not gonna go crazy with my color. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. And uh, sometimes simple works best, I think. But, uh, you know, let's see what happens. Get that there. All right. So this is um, a pigment I got from Australia. Let me get a stick. This is Art Tree Creations. And they have some really nice colors. I'm trying to decide which one I want to be my primary color. Eh. I think I want this turquoise color to be the primary one. So let's get some. Into that cup. You don't need a lot. It's very intense. And you want to start out not with too much in there because you can always make it darker if you don't think it's dark enough. And look at that. That is dark enough. <laughs> so that just shows you how intense the colors are. That's pretty. And you can check your color by holding it up and letting the light shine through. And you'll get an idea on how it's going to look. Now, because I'm pouring on white, it's going to show up really nice. So that's it for that one. I have another from Art Tree Creations that I'm going to use. This is called uh, Aqua. This is Aqua. And again, very little bit because I don't want it to overpower the piece. But this one I want to be opaque. So the other one is transparent. And this one I want it to be opaque. So let's get it stirred up. That looks good. Very nice. It just incorporates really well into the, the resin. One of the things I like about the Art Tree Creations brand. Now one of the 
other colors I'm going to use. This is, actually I should shake it. This is by Jacquard. It's a Lumiere. And this is a fabric paint. So it's an acrylic fabric paint, light body, metallic acrylic. And this one's called Pearl Turquoise. And I want this one to be very transparent as well. It's going to be an accent color. And I know from using this before that it's not a really intense color. So I don't want to go very dark, but I do want to get that tint in there. So again, I just used a little bit and it's got a nice little shimmer, a little pearl to it. And these are pretty inexpensive and the color, the pigment is very intense. It's a um, artist grade pigment. So it really uh, holds up well. And I think that's good. Again, I don't want it to be too dark. So, done with mixing up my pigment colors. I have a bottle of spray alcohol, and I have this handy dandy spreader, which I don't even know how I broke that, but that's gonna come in really handy for me to maneuver the resin around in this tray. Okay, I got a little spit while it was talking there. All right, so let's get to it. We're just going to start with this turquoise and I'm gonna pour it out and it's important for me to get it to those sides early on because I want it to go right up to the edge. So I'm gonna pour that out Get it all around. Okay. And then I'm going to use my spreader and I'm going to work it carefully into those corners. Now the resin's going to flow and it'll level out all on its own. Before I turned on the camera, I made sure that the tray is sitting level on my work table. And that way I'm gonna get an even application of resin for my tray. So I'm just gonna continue working that around. If I should, no. by mistake, get any resin on my sides while I'm working, what I can do is put a little tiny bit of um, alcohol on a Q-tip and I can I can get the resin off, but it has to be wet. And I had a little corner I couldn't get the tool to go into and a toothpick did it. So, all right. out. Okay, now we're going to hit it with the heat gun. 
and get it to move around a little bit. So hold your ears. I worked away on this thing and I burned up a lot of time playing around with the torch and the heat gun and working everything into the corner and edges. So my resin started to set up on me and I wasn't getting quite the effects I wanted out of it. So I started fiddling with my pop stick, moving some resin around and getting a little bit more interest in there. I also did another layer the next day basically a clear coat with a little bit of white a little tint of turquoise and that gave me the added detail I was looking for unfortunately I didn't film that for you guys the end result was excellent it has some really nice detail and depth to it uh, beautiful colors and I'm very proud of this piece if you guys want to do something similar to this, it's a pretty easy process, uh, especially when you're not taking the time to try to talk and film. You should be just fine on your time. I hope you enjoyed everything. And again, remember to have fun. And thanks so much for watching.